All right, so I want to take a quick minute, share some thoughts. Got a lot going through my mind, and I want to try to lay it out in a way that uh, gets you to think a little bit. And so, because everything is, is starting to add up even more for me personally to be able to share this, and hopefully you guys can understand where I'm coming from with this. But uh, it, boils, it boils down to if the mind can, can think it, then obviously it's something possible. And so, once again, this is another approach towards just my skepticism about the whole decentralized you know, crypto, cryptocurrency space and everything involved with it, given the fact that over the last seven days now, uh, we have been introduced to something relatively new, but is it? The Economist cover in 1988 predicted that you know, we should get ready for a world currency, and it had the phoenix with the coin burn, you know, sitting on burning currencies. What do we have right now? Currencies are literally being destroyed, and we have a coin. Now, that was one of the things I remember mentioning years ago. Is like, what would I look like? Will it be Bitcoin? Will it not be? I don't know. Will it be central, central bank digital currencies? W who knows? But here we are today, and I think uh, the move made last Monday by Naib, the president of El Salvador, plays directly into what was supposed to happen in this exact moment in time, given the whole global experience we're having with this pandemic and the need to, I guess, rebrand national currencies. My personal opinion is that that economist cover was a pre-planned event that told us what they wanted to do and what they wanted to occur in this exact moment in time and just look at the words they're using we need to do more for the unbanked to promote financial inclusion what better way to ah, dangle a carrot in front of people other than making them think that it's about you making it think that it's about us that we the people by ultimately using people who have been financially oppressed due to a debt-based monetary system and giving them something new but making it appear as if it's a genuine grassroots movement because at that moment, once it takes root and it's out there, you can sit back now and just let the adoption push unfold and make it appear like a genuine grassroots movement that is in the best interest of the people while all along it could be a part of a greater plan. And so uh, before I die further, I got a lot of articles in front of me here. I'm going to try to get to them as best I can, but I want to give a little bit of a history note, a little history lesson to try to compare this current time frame to one we experienced over 110 years ago. And so I was actually doing some research, and, as a, and of course, I always talk about understanding monetary history gives us a good framework as to where we are and where they're trying to take us. And I want to bring up something, Senator Aldrich. And so Senator Nelson Aldrich was a congressman who, in right after 1907, the bank panic of 1907, uh, we had another credit issue created by the banking system before they were too big to fail back at that point. That's when they were beginning to take over the monetary system. And so Senator Aldrich ultimately came up with this commission and it took three years to study the current credit crisis we've had in the United States of America. And the end result was the Aldrich plan, which was a big bank, Jekyll Island creation, the National Reserves Association. And of course, about 1910 or so, 1911, uh, that whole movement there received a lot of negative press and the people, real journalism existed, they knew it had smelled like a trap. It smelled like something that wasn't right. They shot it down. It didn't move from there. Now, the two big fell banks, they changed the game ultimately by purchasing and buying every single journalism source that existed, every news source, every news syndicate, you name it, was all purchased by the uh, we got the Warbirds, we got J.P. Morgan, we got uh, the Coons and Claws. So we got all those banks. I can't think them off the top of my head. But all those entities basically went in and purchased every single outlet where people received their news. And from that point on, they controlled the narrative of what that Aldrich plan, which was shot down, which then evolved into the Federal Reserve Act, change the title, make it look like it's all fine and good. And then now that the media has been purchased, they now can come in and then deliberately spin the narrative and make it look as if the Federal Reserve Act is the best way to break up the money trust, all the controls of all the two big, the soon to be banks that they had on the economy, gold supply and everything else. They were, the money trust was the banking cabal back in that era, well before now, but I'm going to get into how it relates into this current situation. 
But yet they basically said that that is the best way to break up to break up the control of all those banks. And you spend it enough, you tell enough people, you put articles, you buy the news, you put articles in there, you pay people to go out here and say that that's the best way for our country to make these banks go up under by creating this new entity that's above them. We'll have 12 separate branches all across the whatever, whatever. Okay, bam. It worked. Federal Reserve Act was signed December 1913 by Woodrow Wilson, who was another puppet put in place. And here we are, 108 years or so later, and... They fully ran their course by destroying the global economy, draining it completely of all its wealth and everything in its entirety. It worked very well. Now, you take that same little spin that I just gave you right there, you bring it into modern times. Once you're done basically stealing the wealth of every single country by creating a debt-based currency and then running it into the ground to where purchase is very little, now it's time for a rebrand. And in 1988, well before then, because <clears throat> all this stuff we're experiencing now, in my personal opinion, was already a pre-planned event. Nothing we're experiencing now is just by coincidence. I would imagine you guys can all believe that. Okay, so how do you pull off the greatest heights in humanity by convincing people that it's okay to lessen your need for physical tangible property and wealth because why we have something better we got computer code it's trustless it's seamless it can be transferred around the world at the click of a button you don't need to do nothing just sit back and just trust the code okay sure so the economists cover 1988 get ready for a world currency and i remember always wondering what would it be how would it play out it was pre-planned they still control everything 10 times more Every mainstream media source putting out all this FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt, and doubt is still in control. And so here we have the advent of the blockchain space, you know, a rebranded version of cryptography in a, in a, in a packaged as a decentralized, it's not one source, can't be shut down type of narrative. And now El Salvador, the first country to come out and make it a legal tender, and then we have the financially oppressed that's extremely excited at the idea that this is the way out. This is the way out of the bankers and central control monetary hands by basically having governments now become financially sovereign because they all can get pieces of this small pie that has all the monetary properties of gold and silver, but it's better because it's borderless. It can be transferred across the region at the stroke of a key. Okay, fine. I personally believe, this is my opinion, and I'm waiting on somebody to prove me wrong. And this is something where we can have a great discussion about this because, as I mentioned, if the mind can conceive it, then obviously it's something that is possible. And so with this El Salvador making legal tender Bitcoin, then we're going to have Panama, Brazil, all the nations that have been financially and monetarily ruined, they are now heavily incentivized to incorporate the Bitcoin legal tender status into theirs as well because... They have ruined their economies. The two big to fail banks, the global cabal, all those individuals have literally drained the wealth out of these nations to where it appears on the surface. Like it is the obvious choice in order to get some type of freedom. You have to now join this particular world currency. So I think we're here by design as world currency is intended. And all this uh, little rant today started for some articles that was sent to me that I wanted to definitely touch on because once again, it's all interconnected. And this goes back to the parallel to the Aldrich plan, which eventually became the Federal Reserve Act. Now all the mainstream media is bought up. We all know that they're deliberately putting FUD out there, fear, uncertainty, and doubt about Bitcoin in particular and its newfound role, uh, role as a legal tender. What better way to create that good guy, bad guy, or good cop, bad cop narrative by also controlling the mainstream narrative and all the media sources that are mainstream are bought and paid for because they're part of a bigger you know entity of publicly traded companies that still hold things down but yet what better way than to make it appear that there is a uh there's a, a a movement against against the, something new disruptive and all that other good stuff like that from china you know so china gonna shut down their miners okay woo, people get scared uh, we got uh, the IRS and Janet Yellen and Jerome Powell coming out saying that we need to tax people, whatever. Ooh, sell off. And then we have, uh, what else? Y y you name it. Whatever FUD is out there, it all makes the market dip. But also, for the financially oppressed, those that are literally wanting to see Bitcoin succeed, mind you, as I mentioned, once it's put out there, let the people who uh, now have become financially invested in its success do all the work for you so just a moment ago i'm looking at michael saylor telling something on, on twitter saying that you know it's time to 
you know, this, he's showing a country saying that it's time to have this country, you know, fully adopt towards Bitcoin. That's the only way out. And then, of course, a lot of influencers, a lot of heavily, you know, individuals who got large followers, they're saying, yes, do that. That'll be the best way. And I'm like, now it's already accepted. Bitcoin has already become the world reserve currency for a good portion of people who are financially invested. And now, because we have maximalism in this particular space, people are emotionally dependent upon its success because they have a lot invested in it. And so I think that Economist cover was designed to basically put us here to where we got the FUD, the fake, the tug of war. China needs this to succeed. The U.S. needs this to, su to succeed because how else can they finish off this whole narrative and finish off this whole transition similar to the transition from the banking panic of 1907 with the fake Aldrich plan, which, which was intentionally shot down. You buy up all the media. You create a false narrative saying that this is the best way to disrupt the banking cabal. You know, this is a, this not, you know, the Federal Reserve is an entity that will definitely take the control out of the bankers' hands, but really, it put it all in their hands. Fast forward 100 years later, the dollar's dead. Now, we had a new, new time frame where we need a new currency. What better way to do it than other than pre-planning and saying that this Bitcoin stuff, the governments don't like it. Governments can't control it. Governments can't do anything with it while all along in order to pull off the greatest heist in humanity i.e the transition to digital rebranded currencies you need bitcoin to succeed you need all the technology all this inter the interoperability so i'm gonna finish off my rent with this the three primary articles I, I intended to start off with yesterday somebody forwarded me forwarded me this particular post here it says cryptocurrencies can enable global financial inclusion and so this is from the world economic forum just seven days ago, put out a post saying something about the lines that this is a concern. We're going to be meeting with uh, the El Salvador president on Thursday to talk about this. And then all of a sudden, within 72 hours, there's this tweet here lets me know that something has changed or did it or was naive initially. As I mentioned before, a puppet that's being dangled some, from some strings and he was told to actually do this because this is what is needed in order to fully get this thing rolling and ultimately all this is about cbdc's this is what this is all about why because they're intentionally intending on ending this current debt-based monetary system entering into something completely digital in nature and the only way they can get that done is if people will willingly cooperate but you can't get people to willingly cooperate unless they have a vested interest in the success of whatever it is that's in front of you because if not there'll be resistance and as long as people are not resistant because they've accept what's in front of them as being something genuine and from the ground up and for the people can, can provide financial inclusion, they will give you all the foundation you need to create your ultimate plan, which is more of what we've already had. But instead of just debt enslavement, now it's going to be digital debt enslavement. Something to think about. And then another one here, making Bitcoin legal tender in El Salvador and Interesting experiment, central banking official says. So we have one of the Bank of International Settlements directors coming out and saying that it's an interesting experiment. Well, also, several days ago, they came out with some questionable statements on this whole move into this digital space. So the question we should ask ourselves, what changed? Is Bitcoin really that disruptive? Or do they really want Bitcoin to succeed so that they're able to pull off exactly what was pre-planned in accordance to what the economists cover, i.e. the Rothschild supported, the Rothschild partially owned magazine. One. And then on this last article here, this is something that came across my radar this morning. It said, Fed explores once in a century bid to remake the U.S. dollar. And as I read through the article there, a lot of things stood out to me. I wasn't going to do an entire video on it, but I'm like, I'll just save myself the headache. But one of the statements in there said that, who could have seen this coming? Who would have ever thought prior to 2019 we would be having this discussion? And my first thought was, me, <laughs> I've been talking about this for several years now because to me it's quite obvious. How do you end something and start something new? You need a lot of distractions, a lot of diversions in between to keep people's attention every which way so they're not looking directly at what this is all about, which is the green. And it's the green <laughs> that is the problem because we're losing our purchasing power day by day and it's going to get worse as we head into this digital evolution that they've already planned for us. So, but anyway, with all I've been said, I just want to rant a little bit. We are right on time. The Economist cover told us, told us where we'll be at. The world currency can be Bitcoin because that's what we were told would be something in around this ballpark. And what better way to pull that off other than to say it is Bitcoin because that's what we were told to do. But then also... The Economist cover most recently as of May also lets us know that get ready for a Fed coin 
and the e-euro. Why is that? Because that gap in between that announcement in 1988 to the conclusion of all of this experience will be the central bankers somehow, some way, being able to pull off this entire experiment with very little resistance because the people in the middle happen to have been financially invested in something called decentralized technology, i.e. Bitcoin and everything else of that magnitude. And if they have their way, Bitcoin will be revealed in the future as being the best way that people willingly participated and all the signs were in front of them, but yet a lot of people choose, uh, chose to ignore it. But anyway, I can go on and on, but I'm not. Hope this kind of makes sense. Once again, this is just simple discussion that we need to have for those that are interested in this space. Prove me wrong, and I'll be willing to shut my mouth with no problem. But once again, until then, I'm going to continue to share with you things I believe is, are insightful because it should cause us all to think and question everything and believe nothing. But anyway, thought I would just get this out real quick. It's always good, as I mentioned, to talk to people who think like me. If you enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up button. Share this video so it gets other people to think. Let's have some serious discussions now. Let's not just accept that Satoshi Nakamoto and the white paper and all that stuff like that was, you know, God's gift to mankind for us to be free finally. Come on now. Anyway, see you later.